Hello, everyone, and welcome to the pre-recording of block party number 96. We're going to have a normal schedule, uh, starting with food healers and then SRM and then collective intelligence. I'm going to take a, a break at noon Pacific time for about an hour and a half or so because I have to go get my hair cut. So I'll take a break for a little before noon. I need to look good for Los Angeles. It works for Scotland, so it ought to work for Los Angeles as well. So I'll, I'll be gone for about an hour and a half starting at about 11.40 a.m. Pacific time, and then I'll be back. And uh, anyway, see the email for the agenda. But having said that, even though we're covering a broad variety of topics on the agenda, um, our focus throughout is going to be on Los Angeles and transforming Los Angeles into the world's first compassionate metropolis. Okay. And this has a number of facets, but I just want to get to the heart of it. Okay. See, right now, Los Angeles is largely about uh, money, power, status, looking good, doing cool movies, making lots of money, you know, making music, making lots of money, looking good in your shiny new Tesla or electric Porsche or Range Rover or whatever the hell, looking good in your yacht, looking good in your mansion, looking good, looking good. And that is precisely what is killing the planet. It's the hyper individualism, the hoarding, the focus on the individual. So we are starting a revolution of compassion and love, a love evolution in Los Angeles, which is characterized by a bunch of things. And I'm just gonna make a short list right now. So everyone, uh, I'll, I'll just kind of jot down my short list and screen share at some point. Um, but you know, what are the things that, that, that comprise a compassionate uh, Los Angeles? Well, the first word beyond compassion, and we'll get clear about what we mean by that, um, is the collective right? People coming together, collective, community. Um, and um, as regards compassion, we have the community cafes, food healers, love all, feed all, starting with food, right? And plant-based food so that we put an end to cruelty. So food for all, um, being the first domino in a very specific train of dominoes that will each, no each knock over each other. Um, each one will knock over the next, rather. So starting with food, you know, food and water, followed by uh, shelter and sanitation, you know, shared bathrooms, showers, laundry, et cetera, all the good things we do with water. Um, so food, shelter, health care, uh, and other basics in roughly that order, right? Um, providing all of those as basic human rights for all Los Angelinos. Now, what's interesting um, there is that the biggest objection I can imagine to that is wealthy folks in Los Angeles and even middle-class folks in Los Angeles saying, hey, wait a second, if you're gonna give out all these freebies, then all these poor people and houseless people in other communities that aren't giving out these freebies will come to Los Angeles. It's a it's a valid concern, right? You with me? You know, if you you know, if you've got your piece of the pie and you're sitting pretty there in Los Angeles, you don't necessarily want, you know, hundreds of thousands of poor people pouring into Los Angeles to enjoy all the freebies. And this is where Los Angeles really needs to step up and be bold and courageous and say, listen, we understand the concern and here's how we're gonna address that concern. We're gonna do such an awesome job of creating a compassionate Los Angeles, the world's first compassionate metropolis that yes, a lot of people are gonna come to Los Angeles to check it out and see what it's all about. Um, but I predict most of those people are gonna be people who come to learn about the model, participate in the model, and then help export the model to their communities, whether it's New York, Chicago, San Francisco, small towns and communities 
anywhere and everywhere, all over the United States and all over the world. It's time for Los Angeles to be the birthplace and to lead a revolution of compassion all around the world, where we make all basic human needs, basic human rights. That's how we're going to form a team humanity and get out of all this hyper individualism and hyper competition, whereby we get so entranced in the game of competing with each other, competing with other humans for our own survival, and it becomes a dog eat dog world. We get so entranced in that that we lose touch with Mother Earth. And we lose, lose touch with our collective spirit. And we just become engrossed in competition and hoarding and stuff and money. And we lose our humanity. And it's no fun anymore. And we're just killing everything. So we're really going from one extreme to the other extreme, the extreme of community, the collective, compassion, caring, sharing, etc. Now, does that mean if you're wealthy, you have to give up all your possessions? Well, and, and all your wealth and all that? Well, that would certainly be nice, but it's not, it's absolutely not required. And, um, and in fact, uh, if we continue down the path that we're on, though I hate to say it, and I don't want to be a fear monger, but if we continue down the path we're on, you're going to lose everything right? Between exponential global warming, sea level rise, wildfires, and pitchforks, we all stand to lose everything, right? So this is our best opportunity to save life on earth, not just to save humanity, but to save all of life on earth, this revolution of compassion. And it includes, but is not limited to, creating a compassion, the world's first compassionate government. And I'm going to screen share a poster here because I'm having a poster made for Molly for her campaign. Um, and it's, it's inspired by this poster that I made for the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella. You all see that? So it's Princess Leia from the original Star Wars. Instead of saying, help us, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're our only hope. She's saying, help us, Sacha Nadella, you're our only hope. Because we did a whole month, month-long action at Microsoft. Got everyone's attention, including Sacha, who's a friend. And um, said, hey, and basically the message then, that was back in 2018. The message then was, Sacha and Microsoft, get in the game of saving life on earth, cooling the planet, et cetera. It's fine that you're making, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars, that's all great. But, you know, use your amazing talent that you have in the company to do something for the planet. We can solve this, but we need your help. Anyway, that moved the needle with Microsoft. They responded with um, some kind of underwhelming, but nonetheless, they responded with some, with some positive action. Um, here, instead of, it's going to be the same poster, but instead of saying, help us, Sacha Nadella, you're our only hope, it's going to be, help us, Molly Basler, you're our only hope. And instead of Sacha's picture there, it'll be Molly's beautiful picture. Uh, she's a beautiful person, beautiful human being, vegan, compassionate, fully supports, ending hunger for all. So I think that'll get a lot of attention. You know, the Darth Vader and that whole uh, compassionate message. The, and we'll put the same message out to all the politicians, anyone who's running. And we'll be very clear, we are installing a new government in Los Angeles. Installing. We are installing the world's first compassionate government within the world's first compassionate metropolis. And the transformation is going to be very fast because we're going to be doing a major feeding every Saturday and we're going to expand the number of locations for that. Ultimately, we want to get so that we have feeding stations in every zip code all across the greater Los Angeles area with free food for everyone as an ongoing service. Show up, fill up your containers with nutritious, delicious plant-based stew, take it home, feed the family, simple, free right? Free food for all. So that's the first step. Again, that's the first domino. 
in that series of dominoes, right? Um, I'm also bringing the posters for, uh, for, for global warming and cooling the planet with marine cloud brightening like Marco's image in the back there with the vessels, um, including another Star Wars themed poster where it shows the Death Star shooting its characteristic giant laser beam starting to break up and destroy Mother Earth. And on the Death Star, it says abrupt climate change. And at the bottom of the poster, it says, which side are you on? Which side are you on? Abrupt climate change, which side are you on? And I'll say, which side are we on Los Angeles, right? Somebody has to take the lead here. We know that uh, national politics are all screwed up. Global politics are all screwed up. You know, Russia's threatening Ukraine and the United States and Russia and China are all in competition. China and Russia. Hey there, Charlie, how you doing? Hey, we're recording. We're just going to kind of go with the flow here. We're powering through. Thanks. And feel free to jump in. So anyway, that's, that, that summarizes, um, you know, the first two big changes that we need to make to save, heal, and transform life on Earth. Free plant-based food for all as a basic human right, starting those dominoes tumbling. Shelter, health care, and all, those, all the others follow for basic human needs. And then solar radiation management to cool the planet being the first domino in another train of dominoes uh, addressing all the other planet forms of planetary healing and saving life on earth saving the ecosystems and saving the planet's life supporting systems and we los angeles are taking the lead we are transforming ourselves into the world's first compassionate metropolis with the world's first compassionate government Anyway, with that, I pass the talking feather. Any comments, any thoughts, anything you'd like to add to that whole uh, mission um, of a compassionate Los Angeles? Love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, as um, our dear friend from the Netherlands taught us, are we restoring the cooling capacity of the earth? I would like to get that into the uh, summary. Are we, are we, are we restoring the cooling capacity question? Thank you. Oh, and the answer is yes. The answer is absolutely yes, because number one, we're cooling the planet with marine cloud brightening, but we're also by transitioning off of animal agriculture and eliminating animal agriculture, we're returning these vast uh, ecosystems to mother earth herself to rewild, to reforest. And of course, trees contribute immensely to the natural cooling of the planet as our friend Marcel from the Netherlands shared with us earlier this week. Um, so the first big solution for humans feeding everyone plant-based foods is also the first big solution for the planet, right? Or the, one, of, one of the first two for the planet, one being plant-based foods and eliminating animal agriculture and eliminating all that devastation to the earth and to the earth's forests and letting them bounce back and replanting trees, et cetera, et cetera, and doing everything we can to help those ecosystems bounce back. And then the other one is marine cloud brightening. So two big solutions for mother earth, plant-based foods and marine cloud brightening and one big solution for humanity, plant-based foods for all for free. And, and all three of those get the dominoes tumbling, both trains for people and for mother earth. So yes, Michael, great point. Any other comments or additions? Um, anything else regarding a compassionate Los Angeles? Well, I'd just like to say that um... For the average person that may view this uh, video and hear what we're talking and proposing, it might sound to the average person who doesn't know what we'd be doing and building towards here in this in the block party. Like, um, what they could be here, what they what they're hearing can sound like it's almost uh, a bit. Who do who do these guys think they are? You know, this uh, all sounds fucking totally fantastical. Sorry for the language. Totally fantastical and thinking and. That's never going to come about, and but, and I don't blame a lot of people for thinking that way because we're all born into this situation, and we accept a lot, and we think 
you know, it's just the way things are. Like this is the way we, this is the way life is, and this is what you have to do, and this is how you get on with it, and this is how you make the best of things. And uh, if you don't, man, you're just going to end up on the street and fucking hungry. Like that's just the way it is. Like that's life. Well, it's fucking not. Unfortunately, I have news for you. It's not. It's the life we've been born into because it's a system that has been well and finely tuned over um, over you know, millennia, if not you know, if not centuries anyway, the last couple of centuries anyway, without a shadow of a doubt, it's been well and truly manipulated and orchestrated and uh, worked out between all those that are, you know, the top financial powers to be, so to speak, whether it's corporate or political or media. It's well sewn up and stitched up now. It's to leave you believing that. Yeah, well, this is the way it is, like, and that's, we just have to make the fucking best of it, like. But we don't. Simple and truthfully, we don't. So what we're talking about here may sound fantastical to the average person, but if you really stop and think about it, we really are the most, as we consider ourselves to be anyway, the most intelligent species on the planet. Why do we allow ourselves to suffer every fucking day? Why do we allow so few of, 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 of ourselves to be in power and tell us which way we should live? And that, the result of that is that we, most of us, suffer, work hard all our lives, very little, to try and feed ourselves and put a roof over our children's heads and educate them. And it's a struggle till you end up in the great, an early grave. And your children could be left with dead or either way or on the street. But the point is, for the average person, life is an absolute struggle. And why is that when we're considering ourselves to be the most intelligent species on the planet? Why do we make a system that has the most of us struggling? We didn't. It was designed and we were born into it and we accept it. The time's up. No more to be accepted. It's no longer can people accept it. People are getting up and saying, fuck this, I've had enough of that. The Canadian uh, protest was a great example of it. And they got, thankfully, they got their win today. You know what I mean? They won, thankfully. You know what I mean? End of restrictions in Canada. They're finally seeing sense there. No, I'm not going into that one. That's a totally different separate situation. But the point is, it's an example of people getting together and standing up for what's right. Because at the end of the get at the end of the day, it is right what we're talking about here that all these basic human, uh, sh human rights they should be all basic human rights. All these you know, you know basic human needs should be basic human rights. It's as simple as that, and there should be no other way if we were that intelligent and a species on the planet. So, it's time for change. It's as simple as that. Nothing's fantastical about what we're talking about. It's all actually very, very possible if we actually work together. I'll leave it at that. Beautiful, James. Thank you. And welcome back, Alan from Scotland. Welcome back, Alan. We're just doing a recording here. Hey there, Alan. We're just doing a recording for tomorrow's block party, letting everybody know what we're going to be focused on, which is creating, co-creating a compassionate Los Angeles. And really, uh, James, I, I love what you're saying. And it gets to the heart of a major, uh, major issue, which I articulate in the following terms, which is that the vast majority of humanity has gotten lulled into abdicating politics, abdicating our collective responsibility for politics, abdicating to some small number of leaders who are well paid and easily become corrupted by having too much power. We abdicate to them. If they want to take us to war, ah, we, we off we go and we send our children off to get slaughtered in Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever, right? And there's big money in war, as we see the drums are beating for war as we speak. Um, we need to be moving in the direction of saving life on earth. And instead, of, instead, a lot of us are moving in the direction of destruction. But all that is a result of the abdication of responsibility to people like Dick Cheney, who essentially single-handedly orchestrated 
the war on Iraq, costing the United States trillions of dollars, costing a, a, over a million lives, a million dead Iraqis, uh, at least, and devastating a country, just unspeakable suffering at an enormous scale. And that kind of thing happens, unfortunately, every few years or every couple decades, um, because there's a lot of money in war. But I digress, okay? That's one of the tragedies of humanity abdicating responsibility. Well, guess what? We've got Zoom, we've got Clubhouse, we've got Reddit, we've got email, we've got social media of all different kinds. A lot of these are corrupt, as we know, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Why? Because the minute someone sticks their neck out and goes against the flow of the money-making machine concentrating wealth for the wealthy, right, um, they get delisted. And they can they, they get their freedom of expression taken away. So we need to fix that too. There's a lot of stuff we need to fix. Um, but in Los Angeles, see, all politics is local, right? You heard that saying. Well, of course, there's also national politics and international politics, but it all starts with the local. There's tremendous power in the local. And we're starting with our press conference on Thursday, February 17th, on the steps of City Hall downtown Los Angeles, on the very steps of City Hall, I'll be setting up and giving speeches starting at 1030 in the morning on Thursday, the 17th. Molly Basler will join at noon Pacific time. We'll be streaming all this uh, through our press conference and um, right here on this on this Zoom channel. And um, so we're creating a thing in Los Angeles that will spread and spread and spread with the food, with the political transformation, um, just the transformation of community, people coming together. And we'll have our big banner out that says, join the conversation. I had this banner in Scotland. Um, anyway, join the conversation, right? It's time. The conversation. Anyway, it's a 10 foot wide banner, but this is coming. I'm, I'm also sending 10 posters to be printed, 10 more posters like the ones we were using in Scotland. James was there, Alan was there, and man, did we make a difference in Scotland, just like we made a difference in Scotland at COP26. And that news spread all around, all around the world. Uh, we were called the runaway success of COP26. We're going to create a runaway success in uh, Los Angeles with the posters, with the music, with the dancing, with the food. And we didn't even bring food to Scotland. Well, we're bringing food to Los Angeles. We're creating a party. Um, we're just doing it. And there's no playbook for this. So we're creating it. And we're inviting you to join us whether you're in Los Angeles or whether you're not in Los Angeles. See, this is part of the cool thing with social media, with Zoom, you have people from all over the world influencing what's happening now in Los Angeles, participating in the revolution of compassion in Los Angeles, because different from Las Vegas, what happens in Los Angeles does not stay in Los Angeles. What happens in Los Angeles gets spread around the world. Los Angeles is the media capital of the world. Therefore, it belongs to the world. It's the world's media capital. So no matter where you are, participate in the revolution of compassion in Los Angeles, get involved, and let's forever dispense with this antiquated abdication of responsibility in the realm of politics, economics, culture, law, how we govern ourselves, how we live, how we walk the earth, right? Let's get out of the hunger games and into the hungerless games. With that, I, I once again pass the talking feather. Yeah, thank you, Jamin. Uh, you know, you addressed the uh, issue of, you know, people being concerned that if we're giving away free food uh, on a regular basis in Los Angeles, that people will come just just to you know, take advantage of the freebies. And I think uh, the more we will, you know, we'll be doing something that people said can't be done, feeding everybody. And the only reason it can't be done is because of uh, 
only secondarily logistics, primarily because of greed of the few that have to have so much more than uh, any one other person. And I think what we'll find, I'm sure what we'll find is as we, as we do this feeding and there are people getting good nutrition, good plant-based healthy nutrition builds their immune systems. A lot of these people that are there already and homeless and uh, many of them with a full belly and a clear head that, that comes from having a full belly will take part and see the value and they'll want to contribute and be part of the solution, not just part of that problem. And, you know, we'll, we'll organize in a way where we're, we're encouraging, um, I can't think of the word right now, we'll, we'll encourage, um, you know, duplication of this and, and rather than maybe draw people in, we'll be sending people out as envoys to spread this far and wide. And, and when we, you know, once we've accomplished even the beginning of that and people can see how it just, it gets, makes everything better, less crime, less, you know, less uh, depression and mental health problems. Um, it'll, it'll become obvious this is a solution for the world not just Los Angeles. Los Angeles, you have to start somewhere. And since Los Angeles often sets uh, sets an example, good and often bad <laughs> for the world, um, this is an opportunity to make the best impression ever, uh, starting with Los Angeles. And with that, I pass the talking feather. Marco, love that it, was, Marco. Oh, yes, Charlie. Yeah, love it, Marco. Uh, Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to reiterate that um, Marco is so well said, uh, you know, the idea of ambassadorship. I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, passing it along. And I think people who come like, you know, I think I'm very little have very little concern for people coming along and uh, doing it for the free food because I want to join in. Right. It'll be some type of vibe or some type of, you know, on an energetic level to feel like, OK, well, this I feel feel welcome right and i want to pass that along right to your point so i think that's a great point and um james beautifully said i love the passion of what you talked about um and her just you know selfishly reminded me i've been vegan for 13 years and probably 14 years ago i remember my wife at the time talking about going to a vegetarian cafe that was 30 seconds from her house and i, I don't want to go to that shit why would i want to eat that crap right it was blissful ignorance and and you know, I think embedded in and probably not not embedded, but directly in what you said, James, is like, you know, we have a responsibility to I mean, I, was, I don't think I was a bad person at that time. I was doing bad things unknowingly, but like to educate others. Right. Like, or, you know, now that we know we have a responsibility to educate others. And, um, you know, one of the events that I, I told Marco about this is, you know, one of my best friends, I'm hosting a vegan pledge for this organization called peace advocacy network and starts in april i'm way behind on it but part of it is is just you know giving people a place where they can um learn about veganism but also not have it thrown at them just like you know here, here's a chance like here come eat come come together it's we're not forcing anything just just try your food and give it a shot right and you know you want to learn a little bit we'll we'll teach you so i think i i love the passion that we have i have to do a call for about 20 minutes and i'll be back gentlemen Awesome, Charlie. Thanks Sounds so much. Good. I'm just actually going to put it on stop video mute, um, but uh, I'll be back sure. in 20 minutes. Sounds great, Charlie. We'll be here. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Really great points. Um, I've got more to say, but I'm going to pass the talking feather so everyone has a chance to share. Well, just to, to re reiterate what I was saying, or not reiterate, but to um, to add on to what I was saying, really, uh, just a further thought um, from what Charlie said, Dilly, uh, you know, it is it is no time for us to take start taking responsibility, especially the more you become aware, the more you have to act on your awareness now, like, and, and then to order, and also to, as in the spirit of what Marco said, you know, um, you know, pass it on. You know, pass this on the knowledge as well as the um, the goodness. You know, uh, uh, not just the idea of feeding everybody either, but the idea of letting people realize that 
this is what it's all about. We have to retrain our, our, our way of thinking about society and community because we have to start looking after each other from a community level up to county level to, you know, borough level, whatever, city level. And again, then, you know, state level, country level, international level. It's That's what it's all about. And it's not something that is impossible. You know, we all know how fast a, a, a silly meme can take off on on the, uh, the online. You know what I mean? Because it's appealing to people. Well, I can't see anything that's uh, not appealing about actually l really for once and all looking after each other and all, not just each other, all. You know what I mean? Make sure that your neighbour has enough too, like, not just you. You know, that's all it is. That's all it is. Because we only have to look out a little bit beyond our own doorsteps. And if we're all being aware and careful like that and looking out beyond our own doorsteps at our neighbours and looking after each other, and every neighbourhood does it, then all neighbourhoods are connected. So it just becomes a worldwide thing, doesn't it? And it only takes one small generation of thought in children to teach them to reteach, not reteach them, but as the new generations grow up, that's what's have to happen in us. As we, in the last number, I, I've been very lucky as a number of, of us here in this room have. We were born into a world that was a completely different world, and the children that we have now, and the grandchildren are own now, that are being born now, do not know or have not been aware of the world that we came from, where we created things to last, not just to be fucking used once and thrown away and discarded and pollute the fucking planet, so that somebody else can make another quick buck out of producing another one. We produce furniture that lasts for centuries, that was passed down through families. We respected and, and regarded stuff as being quality, then in workmanship and trades, all these things have been lost. All these skills have been lost to us because we're being programmed into just looking at a screen and through that screen our God is talking to us all the time now. And that God is manipulated by many different people. And therefore we're all being manipulated by many different people. So the Los Angeles program, as far as I'm concerned, is an opportunity for Los Angelinos, especially given the fact that you know, it, it is an example for, I, and I'm from Ireland and I see it, you know, the people, the encampments on the sides of the road there and on the beach and the people living, the houseless people and, you know, it go, it's going on everywhere. I mean, there's homeless people here in Ireland as well, but I have to say we have a lot better programs and a lot of the homeless are, will be done for different reasons. But my point is that this is something that can spread from Los Angeles, which would be, as James said, is kind of a beacon to the world, really, in a sense, the media to the world. It can also be a beacon of example to the world, no? You know what I mean? An example of compassion and saying, yeah, you know, actually, we can do this and we can change this. And yet there's going to be opposition from those that we're talking about who have the system manipulated the way they want it. There's actually exerted effort to try and do that as we speak anyway. I mean. Russell Rand was after being put on a right wing list of guests now for the Joe Rogan show. Right wing like Russell Brand, the man couldn't be any more spiritually. All he advocates is for peace, love and, you know, look after each other. So if that's right wing, I don't know what the hell we're what kind of a world we're after turning into. But um at the end of the day, we all know there's something radically wrong. We all know that a society is not working both equally for everybody, especially for those people who lost their jobs only recently because of the COVID, ends up on streets while billionaires get $420 trillion divided between them. Like, come on, it's time to wake up. If we don't come to Los Angeles and stand together and show the world as an example that we can all stand together, just like the truckers in Canada and everything else, then, if we, it, then we will be showing our lack of responsibility. As far as I'm concerned, we have the responsibility you now to step up. So I'm only putting it out there. Step up. I'll pass it ahead on. Beautiful, James. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Absolutely love it. You see how simple this is and how obvious it is and how urgent it is. We can totally do this. Michael, if you're not going up in smoke there, I see you got your hand up. So go for it, Michael. Yeah, but I like the idea of us building a bridge with the actual farmers in the in the local community where uh, we're showing people, hey, we want to we want to help the farmers. We're not taking something away from taxpayers. We're helping 
farmers and everybody wants to help their local farmers. And I would like at the press conference, maybe we can make a list. Hey, these are the vegetables that are coming ready to harvest that we'll be including in our student th later this month. Here are the products that we're, we're getting from our wonderful farmers. List a couple of the farmers. Give them from some pre free publicity, please. Thank you. Let's build a bridge with Farm Aid, our friends at Farm Aid. I, I, I won't say who I'm forwarding it to, but they'll be on my list. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome, Michael. Good stuff. You know, we, we are promoting the farmers who donate uh, to food healers to love all, feed all. Um, and if you go to foodhealers.org, our website, uh, you'll see a bunch of farmers there who donate generously to the plant-based stews that we're making. But you also bring up a really good point there, um, Michael, which is the harvesting of the produce. And volunteers can help out with the harvesting, knowing that that produce is going to the plant-based stew. That's a great example. And um, yeah, we could, we could build a bridge with... Uh like day workers. Hey, you want to have an experience on a farm? You can help out this farmer today or next week, one day and divide up the labor. You know, people will identify with our friends, the farm workers. I'm, that's a, that's something true, you know, close to my heart, the farm workers. We want to take care of them better. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And that gets to yet another human right. In fact, I was talking with a friend of mine yesterday uh, in Los Angeles, in District 5. And um, I was mentioning the basic human needs, you know, food, water, hygiene, shelter, healthcare, et cetera. He said, hey, also the right to meaningful work, to meaningful work, right? That's been so deprived of so many people, whether it's through automation, the exporting of jobs to these um, essentially concentration camps, in Asia uh, and elsewhere, um, and um, you know, so so we have we'll have volunteer opportunities on the farms, volunteer opportunities in the community gardens, volunteer opportunities preparing the food, serving the food, cleaning up after the events, et cetera, et cetera, right? And um, so, I mean, there's just so much to this revolution. I, it feels like we're just getting started. And the ideas are just going to flow because people are going to feel loved and cared for. And when people feel loved and cared for, they respond positively. Right now, people are beaten down. Beaten down, deprived, hungry, malnourished. They can't get a good night's sleep. A few years back when I was performing in West, West LA in District 5 in the heart of Westwood, where the big Bruin Theater and Fox Theater and all that, right in the heart of Westwood there at, at the main intersection. I was there singing in my Darth Vader costume, had my signage up, and I was, you know, singing late into the night. It was probably getting close to midnight or whatever. And um, some houseless folks came to me and they said, hey, man, you know, love your message and everything, but we're trying to get some sleep over here you know, it was after midnight. And I was like, oh my God, I had no idea. There are people trying to, so, you know, and that's just one example of the threats to people, preventing them from getting a good night's sleep, the safety risks and everything, the noise pollution, the air pollution, everything else. So we need to provide people healthy, clean, quiet, warm, dry places to sleep where they have access to bathrooms, to showers, to laundry and other essential services. This is not expensive. So why aren't we providing it to people? Because like I said, people are afraid, the wealthy, the well-to-do, the upper middle class, they're afraid of lots and lots of poor people pouring in to take advantage of these free services. So, but we've already addressed that and we'll continue to address it. We need these basic human rights uh, all around the world, and we'll achieve that starting in Los Angeles, because as was mentioned earlier, um, as we <laughs> achieve these successes in Los Angeles, word will spread. And, and um, 
I forget who here was mentioning, it doesn't matter, we're a collective here. But when you look at the statistics of you know, crime, suicide, violence, depression, drug use, drug overdose, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, death, and you see those, all those statistics improving dramatically as we take care of people, duh. Um, city governments around the world are going to look at the miracle of Los Angeles and say, whoa, could we do that? And the answer is yes. Here's the playbook. Everything is just totally out in the open from recipes for stew to recipes for the shelters that we build. Uh, and, and recondition, we're going to repurpose a whole bunch of structures that are currently empty to provide housing for folks, right, um, where they can get a good night's sleep and get well-fed right there and cared for. So we're going to care for people. I also loved the comment that was made that a lot of these people, once now that they're able, able to get back on their feet, not, are they, are they, not only are they going to be able to volunteer, but they'll be able to participate in the collective intelligence, participate in these conversations, right? With a tremendous sense of gratitude and a whole new vision, right? Wind in their sails for what's possible because, wow, they're now the beneficiaries of this compassion, right? So, um, and yes, it will spread to other cities throughout California. For example, I know I'm friends with the vice mayor and city council member of the city of Berkeley, uh, Cheryl Davila. And when I told her about this idea a few years back, she loved it. She said, let's do this in Berkeley. It was kind of a different idea then. Um, but once they, but so that there are people waiting to get into this game. They just need to see the example. And we're setting the example in Los Angeles. Again, what happens in LA does not stay in LA. It goes to the world. It's the trend-setting capital of the world, as well as the media capital of the world. Passing the talking feather. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to want to say, you know, I've I've seen an example of how this works uh, in here in Michigan. There's a, a church that, um, however, they came to it. They they bought a school that closed down, a middle school. And they transformed it into, uh, you know, they, the, the gymnasium is, is where they hold services on Sunday, but they've taken the rest of the school and they divided, you know, all the rooms up into categories with everything a person needs, you know, from health care, uh, all kinds of medical supplies that have been donated, runs all on donations and volunteers. And you know, they do operate, I think, six days a week, taking donations and, and doing, you know, individual help for people. But once a month, they have impact day is what they call it, where they try to make the most impact on the community they can. And anybody can come. And they, on average, I think that it, they serve about 350 families on that day. And many of the, uh, many of the people that come there to take advantage of, of what there is, food, clothing, medical supplies, toiletries, uh, you know, fresh vegetables sometimes in, in, in other foods. It's not a, not a totally plant-based situation, but there's enough of the people that are able-bodied that they, but they need the services. They also volunteer on impact day. So it's, it's, it's that example of once, you have what you need, you want to help someone else. And, and the programs start to, you know, run themselves from the inside out. So I know it works. I've, I've seen it work. It would be great. You know, I'm, I'm working on them a little bit at a time on the plant-based thing. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, fight, fight uh, your battles. Or, or, or not fight battles, you know, bring people into the fold uh, warmly. Uh, and that's what I'm working on here too. But so I think Los Angeles, you know, just that um, visibility for the world to show how this can work is gonna be absolutely amazing. And with that, I pass the talking feather. Beautiful, Marco. Love it. Love it. 
All right. Well, um, I'm feeling pretty complete about what we're we're sharing here, and uh, just want to make sure everyone's had an opportunity to share what they want to share. Yeah, I think that was. Um, I think that that's to the point, really, in a sense, without dragging out too long, we would start repeating ourselves and losing people's interest. I suppose it was short and sweet, and I think we made our points anyway. Like, so I'm happy with it. I just hope people, you know. Get inspired and get in, just take the time out for for five minutes for yourself and have a think about it, like about your the situation you're after being born into and why actually does it have to be that way. Have a think about that one for a while. But uh, join us anyway if you can. Thanks. Beautiful, love it, love it. All righty, well. I'll go ahead and wrap up then this particular recording, and then we'll carry on uh, in the next segment. Okay, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Oh, Marco, yes, please. Yeah, one more thing. Maybe we want to throw in the dates. I don't think we mentioned the dates here for Los Angeles. Sure, sure. Thank you, Marco. So we're going to have the press conference on Thursday, September, sorry, Thursday, February 17th um next uh, a week from today um on the steps of city hall starting at 10 30 in the morning and going till about two in the afternoon molly Bazer will show up at around noon and then two days later on saturday february 19th we'll be at pan pacific park in west los angeles uh for the big feeding event that we're doing then and then a week later, and we'll update Food Healers. Go to foodhealers.org for updates on all this. We'll update that website. But on food, uh, on the, the next Saturday, the 26th of February, we'll be at Santa Monica. I think it's a little bit south of the pier, the Santa Monica Pier in Los Angeles. <clears throat> we'll be doing our next feeding event. <clears throat> the feeding events will generally be in the afternoons. Um, and we'll have music and everything going on there as well. I'll be dressed as Darth Vader and we'll have our pop-up tent, Love All, Feed All, and all the signage that we're talking about. Um, and then the following Saturday, March 5th, probably also in Santa Monica, but we're, we're kind of finding our home for our repeating every Saturday feeding events. Um, so yeah, those are the dates and locations. And again, foodhealers.org will have up updated information on all that. And we'd love to see you there. And then when we do the press conference and even the feeding events, we'll have uh, the information. Um, we'll, be, we'll also be having concurrent Zoom meetings right here in this room um, where uh, we'll also be broadcasting and and holding conversations about what we're doing in Los Angeles. And that's part of taking the message to the world and letting everyone in the world contribute to the message and to the mission. All right. Very good. Shall we call it a wrap? Anything else to, to add? All right. Well, thank you all so much for participating in this conversation. Michael, Marco, Charlie, James, Alan, and uh, we'll see you right here in this Zoom room tomorrow, starting at 7 a.m. Pacific time for block party number 96. We'll see you there. Thanks, everybody.